but also I realized how powerless I was inside of that situation, unable to protect myself from what happened. It helped me to become a different person, but it leaves me still frustrated, it leaves me angry, it leaves me, when I think about it, um, still I feel that helpless feeling because I don't know how I got there, and so fast. At the same time, I agreed with and went along with, and so I was party to what happened to me. I started the first pregnancy at the normal, you know, OBGYN office, and there just seemed to be a lot of traffic, and I was with a different doctor every time and I wanted care that was a little more personalized. Oh, Hi Panda, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? I mean, we can do that before his nap and then... Being a teacher and my husband is an artist, you know, we don't have a ton of money. So once we learned that insurance could actually cover what was done with the midwife, then that made it an even better option and just being able to have freedom in the delivery process and being able to make many of the decisions for myself was empowering. With the knowledge that I have about from the first delivery, I don't think that I'd be more comfortable at a hospital. I still want not control necessarily, but just more of a voice in the process. And I've been present at a hospital delivery and the room does fill up with people and it seems as if the decisions are being made by that group of people instead of the mother being in charge, the mother and the father. Having control of the process, it, it makes me feel as if I'm empowered. There's something I can do to help this along and it's not just something that's happening to me. Um, as far as, you know, what the professional says should happen. I can help you. Okay, hold your finger like this. <laughs> now you can talk. You say hello. Hello. My name is Panda. Well, with my students, they'll remark, you know, Ms. Brown, you're all belly. You know, you're all belly. And then they'll say, my lunch, you gained like 50 pounds or, <laughs> you know. And so since they're struck by that, I think it will be more memorable if I speak to my experience and I tell them, well, this is how I eat. And then they see what I'm snacking on. And so I would be very deliberate in reinforcing those things and talking to them about what I do because I want the young ladies to know that you too can have a healthy pregnancy experience. You don't have to gain 60 or 70 pounds. You know, it doesn't have to be this traumatic experience that ends with medical emergencies and more prescriptions. Put it in the back. Yeah, if you don't mind it being on the seat. I don't believe that race has an impact on my health choices, my physiological health. But I know that among the students that I teach, it's cultural. You know, I, it's mostly black, Caribbean, Hispanic students. And their diet is cultural. You know, it's this is the way my grandmother cooks, this is the way my mother cooks, this is the way I will cook. So being from a different, or having a different mindset, 
being black, but just culturally having different experiences. My mother being a nurse and making certain choices with our diet and what we were and were not able to eat, it has impacted me and I wanna pass the same thing along to my students. I believe the American dream of the earlier part of the 19th century had more to do with finances. You know, can you own a home? Can you, as a man, provide for your family? Can you, as a woman, be that motherly, nurturing, domestic figure? And I believe that has shifted more toward everyone having this personal sense of success an individual sense of success but i would like to extend the american dream to mean am i balanced you know within my community you know am i contributing to it so that's how i define the american dream using what you have to not just benefit yourself but to benefit the communities that you're in. I was surprised at how quickly things went and how I ended up on the other side. And I realized, well, hold on, I'm a medical professional. I have knowledge about this. I've worked in the field. At that time, I had been working in the field 10 years. I was a mother, so I had experience from the other side of being a woman, having a baby. All of these things had happened in my life. And so I could not understand how did I get there so fast and be so helpless. And it was that point that helped me to move towards, go back to what you know, because you doing that can help other women. You have a complete understanding now of the system and how it works and even why it works this way. You can help change that for other people. You can support other women in ways that maybe right now they are not getting the support. Because I know that if I had had support and understanding of what was going on, I wouldn't have gotten myself into that position. So I realized that I could make a difference because if it was happening to me this way, then it was obviously happening to other women, particularly black women. And that was a real pivotal moment for me, a changing point in my time here, because within the year this happened and I knew I have to go back to who I am and what I am and what I can do in order to not only empower myself, but to empower other women. Building from there, I opened back up to seeing patients, began to build the foundation for what I'm doing now. And as I, over these years, over these past 25 years, I've got to a point where I know exactly what I need to do. I can't wait to see his face. Hello. He's gonna be so cute. Women in this country have very little opportunity to speak and be heard. I can see how the way I practice, the way I do my work already, opens up an opportunity where there may not have been one afforded before for women to express themselves, to share what's on their heart and to talk and to be heard. Creating space, creating safety around that time when we're in interaction on a health issue is more important than just that specific health issue and it helps us both to share in a way that's authentic and is open, honest, and is meaningful because usually what happens after that sharing is the woman becomes empowered to do something, one little thing, or many things, but it's certainly the beginning of a new way of thinking and a new way of being around her health and her empowerment. Well, with this pregnancy, I started out feeling confident and that I was more informed because I've already had the different experiences before, so I felt like I knew what I wanted. And even with that, 
it's been very frustrating because it's just been roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. I was referred to a high-risk clinic where at first it was okay because they were actually very lenient on me wanting to deliver vaginally. You know, they were on board with it. I spoke to the head to the head physician and he was fine. He was like, you know, it's, it's fine for you to do that. We just recommend that you do it at the hospital. But I started going over there and it really felt like I was just a chart. I don't know who anybody is. Nobody knows who I am. They just read, you know, the sheet on my chart real quick before they come in the room. There's no follow-ups. It just felt like I wasn't getting any attention at all. I was left in the dark. There was no information being given. I wasn't getting any answers, even medications that were prescribed to me that I had bad reactions to. Nobody was held accountable for anything. I, just, I really didn't feel safe at all. Every time I went for an appointment, it felt like I was being treated like a medical condition. It feels, um, you feel helpless, very helpless. And even me, you know, I, I do my research outside and, and I come prepared with questions, but when you do, you get like a kind of a, a pushback from the doctors. Like if you're somebody that's asking questions and that wants to, like that's inquisitive and wants to know what's going on, like they expect to just to like move in and out. 